Got it. There's a slight delay on the YouTube, so it, it should show us in 10 seconds or so. Okay. There we go. Got yeah. it. There's a slight delay on the YouTube, so it, it should show us. slight delay on the YouTube, so it, it should show us. Oh, God, it's not here, both of them, though. Uh, you need to mute the YouTube page. Yeah, I did. Okay. All right. So we're live. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, watching from anywhere in the world. I hope you've had a coffee if you're in UK time or if you're further, say you're in Australia, maybe you've had a beer at lunchtime or something. But uh, welcome. Uh, that person drinking on screen there, I think it's beer. <laughs> That's Timo Lang Langer. Hi, Timo. Uh, Hello. Timo, Timo and I have been uh, working together for decades Timo I think we've made 22 films together or something uh, and we're going to do something I don't know it's ever been it's ever been done before which we're going to edit our next project in front of your eyes if you care to watch are you it's bit, are you a bit nervous about this Timo um it's, it's just yeah it's unusual and it's also because it's something like it's also a project we haven't really done before no um, it's so it's yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's quite unusual because we're, um, it's going to be in real life, it's going to be in four screens, isn't that, Timo? It's going to be like four big screens here, 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 and here. So the audience will be surrounded by four screens. But for the purpose of this edit, Timo, we're going to put all four on a single screen and four quadrants, isn't that right? Yeah. So, so gonna, <laughs> we have to use our imagination a lot. Yep. I think it's going to be quite difficult because as well as four screens, we're going to have four soundtracks as well. We're working with um, great composer Linda Buckley uh, from Glasgow and Ireland, and she's a brilliant, she's given us brilliant music and a great sound designer, Anya Priskoda. So she, they might be popping. Sorry, I, I was I was meant to record this and I just pressed the record button. Sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Um, I, I'll just say that these first few bits again. And so we're making a four screen event. First time. It might be the first time that something's been edited in front of an audience before. We don't know. So uh, it's going to be a challenge for us to try and imagine people being immersed in these four massive screens and four massive pieces of sound when Timo it's going to be on our screen very very small <laughs> very small over zoom over zoom yeah. Yeah. so uh, we're going to have to use our imagination and you the audience if you're watching will have to use your imagination to convert um these tiny things into big things in your mind what was it that Shakespeare and Henry V there's um make imaginary puissance i think that was the phrase he used puissance means power obviously so we are going to have to imagine very powerful imagery when we're seeing it the size of a postage stamp and i said we're working with a great composer linda buckley he'll be dropping into the edit and at some point and anya priscoda sound designer and she'll be dropping into the edit but you'll be seeing a lot of me and the top of timo's head <laughs> Because when Timo edits, you, you always keep your head down like this, don't you? So we'll be seeing a lot of your head, Timo, as well. And so um, this is a collaboration with uh, Fruit Market in Edinburgh, where this exhibition will play, and with Creative Scotland have funded it, and Rob Airy and the great people at Wilhelmina Barnes Grand Trust uh, are in collaboration with us as well. So... And the idea, why do it live? You know, a number of people saying, why expose your process? Uh, why do something live? And I think it's partly, you know, if you're a teenager in Shetland or if you're somebody, you know, Shetland has a great arts centre in Muriel, but people, some people don't get the opportunity to, you know, go into culture buildings or they have to travel far or something. So this is an opportunity to sit in your pyjamas and watch an editing process there'll be moments of creativity and there'll be quite a lot of moments of boredom because there's a lot of waiting in an edit as well isn't that right Timo? It is yes uh, sorry I was just checking that everything works fine um, so I'm are you ready to go? I think so yeah let's um, try it let's, let's see what happens I think I think everything's recording and I think things fine. So yeah, I just I got it. I got it. Now. So yeah. you will see basically what Mark and I most of the time look at, which is my timeline. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so 
Should I open the script? Is let's the go, Timo. Way? Let's start. Yeah. yeah. I had uh, Timo had, when we were pre preparing this, as you know, I had said that I thought we should start gently with dissolves um, before we get into the process where we try to conjure the kind of sharper sense of Wilhelmina well, mean, Barnes Graham <laughs> imagination. But I think I've changed my mind on that. I think we should do cuts from the start rather than dissolves. Okay. And I wondered, are you ready to go? Yep. I wondered if the first image should be rather than the title. You know, if you look in the folder called Grindelwald Clips, you know, the one of the cow? Yeah. Uh, it's, we've got two shots of the cow. There's one called, are you in that folder yet? <clears throat> yep. There's one called C1274, which is quite <clears throat> nice, but I prefer the other one, which is, can you see it there? It's, it ends 85958. Uh, yep. And I think there's a moment near the beginning of this shot where the cow comes up to me. Yeah. yeah. So if you go back from about some about because this project um, is about an encounter, you know, between a woman and a glacier, I thought we could start. The audience sees nothing, and suddenly on all on all four screens, a cow is walking up to the audience. So if you're standing in the middle of all four screens, this cow approaches in four directions, you know. So should it be quite close already then, you think? I, uh, I think, of, see where you're parked, a little bit further back, maybe? Just from about there, maybe? See what something would happen if you put that on all four screens, just for, you know, a short amount of time, just to slightly startle people, I think. Okay. And I'm thinking sound-wise, you know, you've got there the bells, the sound bells, but I think we'll put something else sound-wise, maybe to make it more, you know, you want to make people sort of think oh wow this isn't like a documentary for example this is more unusual than that yeah So that's you. So people can see everything. So people can see screen one, two, three, and four there on the timeline. Yeah. So that's the four quadrants that we've called them. And so the top left is screen one, the top right is screen two, the bottom right is screen three, and the bottom left is screen four. Yeah. So it's clockwise. It's clockwise because that's the way people will experience it in fruit market. Yeah. I think editing is always quite a mentally tiring process, but this one's going to be more so because I think so. I think <laughs> because it's like I think it's going to be play like playing several games of chess at once, you know, you know, trying to I, yeah yeah with an audience. <laughs> with an, <laughs> well, I'm going to soon forget that anybody's watching, <laughs> but yeah. No, I mean it is. It's interesting, but it, like you, like you say, I hope our brains hold up. Uh, yeah. We might, we might. I don't know. We're making four films at once, aren't you? No, we're making four films at once. That's right, and we might we might get knackered before five o'clock each day. I think. And people, if people are watching this, they'll they'll notice that around about ten about ten thirty, I start saying, "Is it lunchtime yet?" I get very hungry and so oh, I should also say at three o'clock today as well as being live on YouTube we're going live on Janice Forsyth's uh, afternoon show on BBC Radio Scotland as well because she, she wants to chat to us about uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it and so we'll be sort of two types of live a kind of that what could you call that a multiverse
know what I'm just thinking of? Something like a badger cam. You know, you can sit and <laughs> you can sit and watch badgers and zoos and things. It's a bit like this. Um. So then, once you have placed these, are you going to have to edit each one separately? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> should they all they should should all show the same stuff? All exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's a bit of a fiddly, more of a fiddly thing than I thought. Yeah, um, you're doing this. You can't just tell the computer to insert in that quadrant. You're gonna have you're having to move it by hand, aren't you? Yeah, unfortunately. And because it's four images as one, it's also, uh, yeah. I think it will be easier with photographs than yes, with yeah. footage, and most mm -hmm. of it is photographs. Most so. of it's photographs. There isn't much live footage in this. I think we'll use the live footage kind of. People will get used to still images, and then suddenly a piece of live will be sort of a jolt, you know. And what did you think sound-wise should be coming there? Well, I think we should, because it's a bit too obvious to use the actual soundtrack here, the bells, but I think we might need that bell music in a moment, to, or bell sound in a moment. But for now, there's some of Anya's music, Anya's um, ambient sound, which I think would be nice. Yeah. Um, and that goes all on all four screens as well? Yes, I think so. At the start here, you know, as we go on, uh, we will start to play with the sense of space, you know, and maybe bounce between different pieces of audio and different screens. But here, let's just keep it very simple. OK. Um, do you have a piece in mind already for that? So if you go into the Anya folder, Timo, have a listen to a few things. I like pretty much any of them, you know, the first four, see what's called ambience melting, ambience, ambience underground, they're good. And then there's... Um, ambience, there's three ambience underground, yeah. Right. Uh, maybe we need something with a bit more in it. What about... Yeah, I quite like that. Hear that dribbling? Or do you want to go for, you know, the last? What do you think? Or do you want to have, what about snow, miscellaneous, ice, melt, which is towards the end? Or footsteps? I know that would be too weird. Footsteps is a bit weird, I think. Weird because it would, it's like cow's feet and you hear human feet. Okay, well, yeah. which one of those do you think is best? Just maybe, maybe one of the ambience. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Quite a lot going on. Yeah. Go for one of the ambience. I think we need to play it quite loud. As I say, on all four yeah. new tracks. That's been too fast. I like, do you like the combination of, I like the combination of image and sound, but I'm wondering, should we start a little bit earlier in the shot, table so the cow's a little bit further away, maybe? I like that. Because, you know, we're going to go to these 
paintings of traditional paintings and so to see a glimpse of that background is nice. And we could yeah, and then cut somewhere there before it gets too close, I think, do you? Okay, yeah. Just just a, yeah, a few steps, yeah, something like that would be good. A little bit further back, maybe. It's sort of, we should be slightly disorienting. Right there? Yeah, I think so. What do you think? Yeah. And then I think go to black and then the title. So okay. a black, black screen in all four quadrants and then I wonder, should you keep the audio going or should you, you know, yeah, I'm thinking yeah. because Jean-Luc Godard died recently, you know, the way he would cut audio in and out. I wonder, should we cut to, well, let's do the picture first. So we're going to black for a moment and then let's put the words up, Timo, like a huge Scotland. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh... Is that all together or is that one on each screen? I think it would be nicer if it was the word like in screen one, A and screen two, huge in screen three and and uh, Scotland in screen four. Is that, is that is that doable? Yeah, of course. Um, and like you said before about you could, you know, with sound also have people look certain ways and stuff. Yes. So you could play around with that there if you want, like... You know, like screen one could be like, but then there's a sound coming from screen four. I think definitely screen, I, screen two is showing something, that yeah. kind of thing. I think we definitely will do that, Timo, but we've got plenty of time. We've got 15 minutes and yeah. I think I would, I think I'd prefer to reserve those techniques. You know, we're starting on the outside, as it were, of her imagination and by to the five, like five minutes later we'll start to get inside her imagination inside her head and so at that point we'll start to play with this the screen directions more okay uh, i don't think i've done this title before i've done all the other ones but i don't have a title title okay um do you want it like this and in, in blue and stuff yes i think the same typeface that um typeface and and that blue is on black would be nice and just a title like huge scotland yeah like a huge scotland one on each quadrant yeah okay that will just be uh just do that quickly if you're watching what timo does that it's it's interesting when of course when we started working together we would be both in the same room, this room over there and that table, for example, Timo would normally be sitting and we edited things like the story of film over on that table and we did all our projects on that table, the Orson Welles one, but then um, Zoom hit and um, we realized we thought we would try and do it this way over Zoom and it's worked, hasn't it, Timo? It's kind of, yeah. you're, you're sort of, where are you, 30 miles from here approximately? Is that where, how far away? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm here and um, <clears throat> it, I thought it would be much worse not to sit in the same room, but it's, it works like, fine. Yeah, with just like screen sharing, you kind of, like when you looked, I mean, we were talked face to face, but yeah. when you looked at the screen, you were, you're looking at the same thing now, aren't you? Yes, so. exactly. Normally I would have to sort of sit here. You'd be, I'd be looking over your shoulder a bit at the, at the yeah. image, but now I'm seeing exactly, and I can even see your timeline, which helps me understand what you do, you know, and, yeah. and where soundtracks are being put in and various things, you know, so I think that's, I think that works. Um, how, how big do you want that? Um, I think, uh, uh, I think for now, keep it that size, Timo, because she's talking about huge. And if we used really big typeface, because this is a quote I should say from Willie Ma Wilhelmina Barnes Graham, the painter, and um, because she's talking about huge, we shouldn't use really big typeface. Yeah, like that. That's very nice, actually. Mm -hmm. 
And the theme of this is, for those of you who are watching, the theme of this is really inspiration. You know, this um, great Scottish painter, Wilhelmina Barnes Graham, in her 30s, uh, she'd been a good painter. She'd had a very interesting life. She'd been very driven, even at school. And then in her 30s, she climbed to a glacier. And it sort of changed her, her art life. And she sort of painted it for decades and decades. And so this artwork that we're making is about that inspiring day and about all of us who, like, have you had a day that changed your life? Have you had a moment that changed your life? And if so, what did that feel like? Was it euphoric? And more importantly, if that was a long time ago, what do you feel like when you look back? Do you feel sadness that that was a high point of your life? Or was that just the beginning of another climb to a higher place, as it were? So that's one of the themes we're dealing with here. You know, what, as you'll see, if you watch over the coming days, you'll see that we're having young Wilhelmina Barnes Graham in conversation with her old, her older self in some ways, saying, do you remember what happened on that day? What was it? You know, what was it really? Um, do you have a preference which word on which screen? Yes. Uh, so uh, like should go on screen one, a uh, uh, and two, huge on three, and Scotland on four, please, Timo. Okay. It's almost that. I think we're all, we're, we, can, we can move the audience this way, you know, but I think a lot of it will be this way. Yeah. And by the end, hopefully, we'll have people moving two ways at once, you know. And you're going to get these just roughly right now, aren't you, Timo? Because when we finish the four quadrant, any, it, it, yeah. yeah, then we'll split the into four different films, and you can, you know, position these words, etc., more exactly according to our taste. Yeah. So this is just to kind of make make us so we can kind of see what it will look like. Yes. Yeah, and to get the story working, get the yeah, get the space working. You could say, I guess. So yeah. I like that. I like like a huge Scotland like that. But you wanted some black before, did you? I think so. Just a bit of cut to black first. And ke definitely keep the audio going over the black. But then the question is, do we go to a different audio for the title? Okay, so... I think that's good. I think we need a bit less of the cows. I like where the cow is starting, but the cow is getting a little bit too close to camera, Timo. So maybe shave another few footsteps off the cow. Think is that long enough on the black, or should we? Do you want to do a bit more? What do you think? Yeah, it was a bit short, maybe. And do you like the combination of Kai and, and music, or Kai and sound? Yep. Yeah. It's unusual, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it should be, yeah, non-naturalistic even at this stage. I think you know. I mean, it kind of yeah. It's... I'm wondering whether you want to change the sound, but then it's just the beginning, so maybe you want to ease into it and not yes, have too much so. happening in, in the beginning. Huh? Yeah, I think so. So, so you think keep the 
Anya's audio running over the title as well. Is that what you mean? I think so. Yeah, yeah, because there's room to get more complicated. It will get a lot more complicated, but at this stage. Yeah. And I think actually we have to keep reminding that sen in terms of the sensory response, this will be you'll be in the middle and there's a big big cow coming at you in four directions. So that's really quite enough of a of an input at the start, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> I like. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to go to. So should that cut out to black for a moment before we come in with our old master paintings? Yeah, That's and then that. also um, cut the sound. Yeah. Well. Probably, oh, no. yeah, probably, because when we go into the old master paintings, maybe we should start some Linda music. I don't know. I think, yeah, the sound should cut there. Do you know what I'm enjoying? I thought you were going to have to cut each one of these quadrants separately, but you can make the same edit across across all four quad quadrants, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> so um, let's look at some of Linda's music. Have you opened that folder? Yep. So the 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 first one opening high cello and opening low cello, we need in a moment when we first see Willie. So we need something now that um will so we're gonna to go to this short montage of sort of old fashioned paintings of the way people used to paint the Alps and romantic and all like that. So I wonder should we use anything of Linda here? Um what about number five, like a huge Scotland all? Yep. Um... Have a listen to that and see what you think. <clears throat> So that's very nice. Obviously, all Linda's music's fantastic. Is it giving the right message at this point? What we sort of want to say is, like, here's the way the Alps were painted. Lovely, lovely, very traditional. But then this woman came along and saw them in a really different way. So is that going to do the work for us? Or is it too modernist? So are we seeing old... We're seeing old, old pictures, pictures of the, yes. of, yes. Of the yeah. And it's going to be reasonably short sequence, you know, it's going to be like 30 seconds or something, I think. So um, the, alter the alternative, like the very almost slightly cliched thing would be to use the cowbells, but maybe we want to say that this was a cliched way of seeing. Yeah. And since, since we've just seen the cowbells... Oh, what's that? Which one's that you're listening to? See, like that's strings... And I just thought that's, you know, because yes. it's very romantic. And... Yes. Oh, I can't see one called Strings. Where, where... Very oh, last one I have. Oh, Strings. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Do that. That's better. That's a better choice. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, on all screens, is it? I think so again, because we're only... Well, we'll be a minute into this eventually, so we'll, we'll, that's good. Um, but let's put them on all four screens so that the audience thinks that they're going to have a reasonably coherent experience <laughs> before it starts to go a bit funky. Yeah. Or the alternative, we'll try it with this music, but the alternative is just total silence over these shots. But... <clears throat> Do you want that to fade up or anything? Or yeah, like bump off so. into each other or something? What do you think? I think that it should... Already we're changing subject here, you know, we're going from a 
title moment into a kind of almost slightly romantic misty past moment so uh, it shouldn't um, either we should go to silence for a moment and it's yeah go to silence for a moment and slowly fade up i think or maybe what do you what about fading into each other yeah yeah if, if it's if it's that then it should should be quite a slow fade i think yeah it's sort of so Okay, yeah. Like, like that rather than like that. <clears throat> yeah, that's gonna work. In fact, I think I, I I think that's really gonna work. And I think you could keep the drips going longer over the incoming music. Okay, eh. Let's make it long. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go to Alpine Pictures. That's that folder, as you know, that's called Alps Old Paintings. Yep. And the best one is the one that's called Thomas Fernley Grindelwald. That one? Uh, that's the one, yep. Uh, so I think, Timo, what we're trying to in this moment, we're trying to say to the audience, look at different times for hundreds of years, people came to the Alps and basically did a very similar thing, you know, misty vistas. So I think this is a case where you put that picture on just one quadrant and then cut to it maybe on another quadrant and then we choose another picture and it goes on two separate quadrants, you know, so that would suggest different moments, different times, different places, etc. Okay. <laughs> do you want to be quite conventional and start with one or do you want to jump choose. around or no, start with... Think, no, choose wherever you want. You know, it might be... I think what we don't want to do is move people's eye, one, two, three, four. You know, it should be one, three, four, two, sort of bouncing a little bit, you know, to start to get that sense of... Ooh, yes. this is going to be a, a, a multi-directional experience. Do you want to start with one or wherever? Err, I don't mind. Mm. You choose. Okay. Let's go with three. still position them as yes. yes. to the timing. And this should be relatively short, this sequence, I think. See, Anya's music, Timo, is there an ending in it or does it just fade out? Not Anya's music, uh, Linda's music, does it just fade out? or Because we're going to, if, if not, then we're going to have to fade out. Just fades. That's a fade. Okay, so that we will we can then fade it out ourselves when we're finished the sequence. One, two, Just wondering, should 
should. What are you wondering? Uh, <laughs> I'm wondering, should it would it be better with no music? Because well, we're going to we're go, we're about to go into after this. We see Willie for the first time, and then we've got uh, Linda's beautiful, you know, the high cello and the low cello. So it might ruin the effect of that by having music just before it. Oh, we can see. You're right. We can see. Should, this, I think this picture shouldn't appear in four quadrants, Timo, probably two would be enough. Okay. Sorry, I should have said that. And I, I think the music is, I think it's better without music. Okay. Sorry about that. You can still fade the trickle out, but... Yeah, it's better. It's more austere. Because it looks as if when we're using that beautiful music, it looks as if we're endorsing this rather conventional way of showing the Alps. And of course, we're trying to say, we are on the side of modernism. So have you put three yeah. in there, not four? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, there's still four. And do you want to replace them with something else or just have two? Um, I think we're... Uh, <clears throat> I think, I think in total, we're going to have two or three more romantic pictures. So maybe it's best to mix them up, is it? To, <clears throat> yeah, to have two different ones, maybe? Yes. Uh, the yeah. next one, the next best one, Timo, if you're back, are you back in that folder? Yeah. It's the one that begins 94F7. 94... Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a vertical picture. That one. I think that's a very classic romantic one. Um, and it's a wrong screen ratio. Can you blow that up now or will we blow that up when we strip up, strip the films? Yeah, let's, let's do that later. Okay. So just put that... So maybe the, maybe what we do is we put romantic picture one in one quadrant, then romantic picture two in a second quadrant, then we'll go back to romantic picture one to, you know, sort of mix it up in the timeline. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, how about we do one, two, and then on screen four, this one comes up? Yeah, okay, sounds good. Yeah. And we'll use that one, the second one, twice as well, because it's a good one. So use the same one twice here as well? I think so. Let's see each one twice.
Mm. I like the silence too. Yeah, I wonder. Because there's a lot of music and sound effects coming up, you know, and we're only one minute 30 in. Okay, well, let's, I think let's work on, and then if we yeah. feel later on it's yeah. too dead, we yeah. can always put something in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you ready for another one? Yep. Um, I think the next one could be, there's a picture called Scan ABC. It's still in the old one, yeah? yeah. Still in the Alps old paintings folder. Hmm. That one. Yep. So same thing with that one. Yeah, I wonder whether you hmm. should that come in instead of repeating that one. Should that maybe come in to? Or do you like the twos? No, not necessarily. It might be nice to mix it up a bit more. So if you, yeah. I think it's just the, the list, a little less un unpredictable then. Yes, I think good idea. So to see the first one twice, then the second one once, and then the yeah. third one once, and then, and then you can go back to the second one or whatever. Yeah, or like, yeah, just mix it up a bit. Yeah. That's screen two. Mm. Okay, so we go one, two, three, four. Right, I like that one actually. So are we, that one you're parked on now, you're going to use that twice or are you going to? Do you want another picture first? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are quite a few nice ones, aren't there? So. There are, although some of them, we're, we're, we're trying to stick to the more traditional ones here because there are, we've got one or two other drawings, but they're at slightly more modernist and we just want to show the tradition. There's this postcard thing, you know, what we're trying to say here is that there was a postcard image of this place as well, you know, so what about you know the postcard it's in it's number two two eight seven that begins yeah uh, yeah I, I know it's not a brilliant image but i think we are trying to pitch you know tr tradition versus modernity here and we show when we show really traditional stuff, it'll help us understand how unique she was in her way of looking. Yeah. We've used that one, haven't we? But I don't think we can use the uh, that, uh, that one. Have we? Oh, yeah, we've used that one. We haven't used this one yet, no. Oh, have we not? Oh, no, we haven't. I was wondering about the picture quality of that one. But yeah, put it in. I think we need no more than six and maybe five because some of the other ones we use later on you know i think this looks fine okay i i did do quite a lot of enhancement on it i think when we come to s strip it down into four films i will do a wee bit more work on that one because the blacks could be a bit blacker but for the time being it's good okay so we go one no we go three one Four, two, there we go, mm. four again. Okay. Maybe this is enough, you know, because I'm noticing on the timeline where, where we just 30. want to get flavor of this stuff. So maybe, sorry, you said it again. 34 seconds and we know. Yeah. Oh, 34 seconds. Oh, right. Of course. Okay. So yeah, put a, put a few more in there put a, a maybe. Maybe a repeat of something, or let me see if there's another one that's useful. I want to avoid the photographs. Oh, there's what there's a drawing actually, or a etching of some sort, which I like, Timo. When you're done that one, I'll point it out to you. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then 
back in that folder, Alps Old Paintings, the one that begins 3059. Yep. Yeah, that one. Again, what the composition of that is pretty classic, you know, the two masses on the left and right, and then the sort of, you know, hollow bit in the middle and a little cottage. And... And we've got one more after that, and that'll do us, I think. Okay, let me just double check. Um, three, yeah, one, four, two, four, one, yeah. One more. Yep. Uh, there's another one by Thomas Fernley. Uh, so, but this one's called Fernley Grindelwald. Grindelwald. It was tempting to put a photograph in because the early photographers, of course, made imagery of the exact same composition. In fact, we will put one photograph in because they composed their photographs like paintings. And so there's one good one coming up. Okay, so top up. What about just because like we only repeated one image once, maybe we we repeat repeat that one as well at the end? Sorry, it was just in the photo, yeah. <laughs> All right. What did you say? So we only repeated the first image now. Right. So well, maybe the maybe last not. one. Right. Or, or maybe we should repeat none of them. Okay. And, and take the, the take the second version of the first image out and replace it with something else. Do you think so? There's only one of everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is um, a nice photograph. As I was saying, I think photography used the different the, the, the same, you know. Um, uh, co compositional techniques as painters and so there's a in the same folder there's a very good photograph called master pnp <clears throat> yeah um,
Okay, so we go dup, dup, dup. Yeah, that does the trick. I think that does the trick. We're seeing, especially when you go fast like that, we're seeing the same compositional ingredients, the epic sky, the massing on either side, the foreground images of people or houses or trees. And so we're showing this is this is the way that the Alps were looked at. Okay, I'm pleased with that. Okay. And then I think we cut to black and then we slowly dissolve um, up on all four screens. This is what we're doing now, Timo, is we've said, okay, here's the way the Alps were looked at. And now we're going to meet this remarkable woman. We're not going to have her say anything at first. We're just going to see her and hear Linda's music. Okay. So should we go? Yeah, let's go young Willie first before old. Yep. And I think so. So do you want the music or do you want the imagery first? It's the imagery. Okay, so then that's the, um, what did we call that? Photos of Willie folder. Yep. And the classic black and white one. Young. Oh, young. Yeah. yeah, so you've got a close up. Yeah, that size I think would be good. We'll, we'll change the size. And I think because the music, Linda's music sort of, fades up so i think we could fade her up on all four screens at once so she's the young woman's looking at the young woman from all sides and we're surrounded by this young this woman i'm slightly worried how that'll look on the massive screen because you know even though i've sharpened it and sharpened it the original negative is slightly Fuzzy, but done my best. <coughs> Ugh, why am I doing it like this? I'm stupid. Sorry. So far, so far, this has not been painful. <laughs> but that's because I haven't done any of the tricky bits yet. I'm so stupid. Yeah, so cut to black and then a quite a slow fade up, a kind of David Lynchian slow fade, I think, Timo. Why did you choose 55 frames there? Just to get this rough? Yeah, just yeah. to see. It's kind of twice your normal fade, but yeah. maybe longer. I think longer, yeah. It sort of slightly depends what the music's doing as well, I guess. So, but I think reasonably long, as if we're, you know, that that David Lynchian idea, you should float into the world. We're floating into her world. Yeah. A little longer still, I think. Ninety-nine frames. That, that image is quite big, is it? It is. It's quite big, Timo. Well, it's, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh... It's actually, I think I had a problem in, it's eight, oh, it's only eight, 8.9 megabytes. 
so that's good for us obviously when it comes to the big screen but <clears throat> i think it's might be we've got it in color as well but i think black and given that she's going to be talking to her old older self and the older selves in black and white keep the two the same don't you think yeah we can use yeah, the color yeah. one at some point if necessary yeah i know if you contrast them i think there should be both be black and white yeah. yeah and the same as we said before the same composition as well That's the right speed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think. <coughs> Sorry, I might as well render that because I think okay. the image is actually bigger than it seems to be. But yeah, yeah, I think it came from a massive TIFF file or something like a massive. Yeah. My computer is quite fast, but. Yeah. Still struggling with it. Have you ever been on a glacier, Timo? I can't remember. I have been, uh, but not not walking, just no. snowboarding. <laughs> Snowball. So I've I've been abusing it, not appreciating it. <laughs> Were you a child at the time? No. No, no. <laughs> it was last week. <laughs> You're such a sensitive soul. I know. <clears throat> no, I haven't been actually in a while, but I was like on a glacier, I think, the last time I was like, what, five years ago or something? Mm -hmm. those who are watching we're rendering this image because it's quite a large image and it's four times being dissolved and so the computer is making it work if it is making it work i can see the little circular ball has stopped spinning yep so the computer is not happy at this point i'm guessing Mm -hmm. Um, of course, and also <laughs> should have done that before. Sorry, that was my mistake. They need to be in all quadrants, obviously. Yes, they do. Yes. <laughs> It's great having <clears throat> working on a project where the music's already composed, isn't it? Makes yep. such a makes such a difference, I think. So we know. Yeah, we normally don't have that. Huh? Hmm? We normally don't have that. No. Or we need to find the music ourselves. Or... Yes, but to have Linda's music in advance, really, you can be so decisive, can't you? Sorry, this is really boring stuff, but I need to just, yeah. When you're doing that, I could say something about it. Really? So if you're watching when Timo's doing this technical stuff, um, I could say, I'm sure many of you who are watching this um, know who this woman is, Wilhelmina Barnes Graham. Uh, that if, if you don't, there are two very good books. This one by Lynn Green is a really classic book, and Lynn knew Willie. And so this book is really wonderful, detailed account of her 
work life, our exhibitions, it's particularly good our exhibitions, her themes, our ideas, etc. And Lynn will be giving a speech at Fruit Market Gallery to tie in with this installation in November. But you know, if you really want a deep dive, this is great. If you know if you want a, a smaller account, but an equally good account, this uh, book here which is called Wilhelmina Barnes Graham, and it's by Virginia Button, Ginny Button. And this, I think, is a really very good summary, so much so that when I read it, I did a lot of writing on it to choose a page at random. I don't know if you can see that, but all, I underlined anything that I thought was good which was really quite a lot of the book. <laughs> so um, this one, if you want a starter book, this might be good. And if you want a deeper dive into her work, this is the classic text. And this, um, the reason I got involved with her, her work is like, I admired her paintings for decades, but I took this book up to St. Andrews once and went to where she lived, which is St. Andrews in Scotland. And I took a picture of this book and put it on Twitter. And uh, the Wilhelmina Barnes Graham Trust, I think spotted the image and sent me a message. And so I went to meet them, uh, Rob and Cassia, and then saw a really large amount, a lot, their large collection of Wilhelmina Barnes Graham's work. Plus, they let me see her diaries, her personal possessions, her paints, her canvases, her brushes, her clothes. And so it was quite clear that I was getting slightly hooked on this woman and her, her unusual way of seeing the world. If you continue to watch this or if you come to the um, installation, you'll see that she really looked in an unusual way. All those paintings we've just been adding in, the classic pictures, you know, where people looked skywards to the Alps, you know, it raised your, the Alps raised your eyes in a kind of sublime way. What did Willie do when she went to the Alps? She hardly looked upwards at all. She looked down at the ground. She looked at the structure of the glacier. And so the overall theme of this installation is a new way of looking. Imagine if instead of seeing the Alps, you see this, which is like a crystal mathematical engineering blueprint. That's what's brilliant about her. One of the many things that's brilliant about her. Did that fill, Timo? Are you oh, yeah, you're doing it now? It should be. Uh, sorry, this is boring stuff it's all right and what we have to imagine if you're watching this is that the each of these pictures will be of course like a, 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 something like ten thousand times bigger than this and you'll be surrounded by this these images of this woman looking at us looking right at us or is she if you look closely at that image she's not so much looking right at us she's looking over our right shoulder ever so slightly and you know this is you know the and you know and just what happened in this photograph. But if you look at religious painting of the 1200s, etc., either in Europe or you know if you look, go to Russia and Christian Orthodox painting, the Jesus Christ figure is looking almost exactly into your eyes, but actually slightly off to one side, just there. The idea being that paradise is just adjacent. It's paradise is not quite you, but you're very close to paradise. And so that's what um, that's what those paintings are often trying to do. And just by chance, she's looking just slightly over our shoulders in this picture. <clears throat> Your wheel seems to be stopped spinning again. No, I think it's still working. Um, 20 seconds. Super. <clears throat> OK. 
Come on. And after this, is, when, when this finishes rendering, we'll go to uh, Linda's music. I'm going to opening high cello. Okay, so this is done now. Okay. So I think, Timo, what we're going to do. Oh, look at that. Yes. It's looking a bit fuzzy, obviously, but that's because of Zoom. Um, okay, that's very good. Now, what we're going to do here, Timo, is bring in Linda's music over this. And what we yeah. want to do is to say to the audience, without saying to the audience, you know, that the high cello is the young Willie and the low cello is the old Willie. So let's fit. It's the very first track that in Linda's music, Timo, it's called Opening High Cello. Yep. And let's fade that in over this. And we can really take a moment to listen to this music and look at her. No words, no cutting to anything else. This is just this remarkably intense look of hers. And it's right at the beginning of it that we need the very opening. That's it. Yeah, I think we should stay for on it at least that long, do you? Okay, yep. Yeah. And then there's what we're going to... There's a note there. that comes in, so like there's always a like a opportunity to cut to something. Where they... Yes. Oh, yeah, on that, yes. A cut would be nice, wouldn't it? Because we don't want to do it as well. We suddenly want to cut to the same thing, but the older Willie. And also... Also, the, we have to. Oh, sorry, we have to change the music at that point, Timo, to the second piece in Linda's folder, which is opening low cello. So I don't know if that's a quick crossfade, or if you could. I mean, as you know, I love hard musical cuts. So, um, to choose your moment to cut to older Willie, and then we'll see what happens. And we do older Willie on all four screens. All four, as well. Exactly the same. So we're going to. And I think we might go back to this, these four. So before we, the audience doesn't realize at this point that she's going to start talking to herself, you know? So we just want to see young woman looking at older woman back again, back to young woman again, I think. Okay. So like... Around here, or do you need it longer? A little longer, because I think we yeah. want, want time to drink this in. See that? Rather than the e, that could be a moment of transition to the older woman, could it? Yeah. And definitely a hard cut. So, 
what do you think? I took the black out. I, I took the background out there, as you can see. I think it's nicer without the background. What do you think? Because that white behind our head is too distracting. We want just the look. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. And then when we do it for real, we'll position the eyes so they're directly in the same position on screen, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> I have been, you know, the David Bowie song, Bewley Brothers, I have been singing it in my head for about four days. And much as I love it, it's doing my nut in a bit. The same song. Where did that come from? I don't know. I think I listened to it. Um, I, I think I, well, I know I listened to it in Bologna one night and it, it's just stuck. Yeah, it's weird. Like, you quite annoying. <laughs> yes. I once had, um, Oh, what was it? I once had a really terrible song in my head recently for days and days, and I just wanted to slap myself around the head. Get rid of it. I think this is going to be nice cutting to between her different ages of her life. The whole thing, you know, could just be these two pictures, I think, and Linda's music. I mean, when you read the script, it's a bit like that, actually. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> Good. But when we, when we finish this pass of, you know, of it with the four quadrants, we might look and think, okay, we can simplify it, you know. I think I'm a bit daft. It's an easier way of doing this. Well, too late. It's only the first day of this new technique. <laughs> Should have just copied one image. Uh, stupid. Well, you live, you learn. Uh... See that top right one is a bit cropped there. Could you decrop it? Yeah. Thank you. 
No, look at that. I like. Okay, so and that and that really works. But and you're gonna have to find a a way of transition transitioning to the second piece, Timo, of music, low okay. tempo, and sort of either a hard cut or we should just feel like an octave drop, basically, you know. And once people feel that, they'll understand that, and that can be their sort of musical cue to hear the dialogue, you know. <clears throat> oh yes. Well, should I just try <clears throat> like fading them into each other? As long as it's quite a, quite a quick fade, you know, yeah. it needs to feel like a transition rather than a sort of intent, you know. Yeah, try a quick fade or whatever, but we need to, as long as the audience feels here are two voices, a young voice and an older voice. <clears throat> Seventy four frames. <laughs> Is there is that the beginning of that piece of music, Timo, or are you into it some way? I'm into it like a second or something, but right. it's, I'm wondering it's if... the first note. Right, okay. Does it sound a wee bit like a foghorn just at that moment? Is there just, see if there's another bit which isn't, you know, that's a real, that's a big bow on the lower string. See if there's another, just have another listen to another bit. Okay. from the very beginning then there's just a sense of the beginning of the note you know what I mean so use it what um, once or twice in there you hear the, the bow just beginning to move you know so from the very beginning of it Okay. Maybe there should. Hmm. Okay, I'm slightly worried that it's, it sounds like a foghorn, but no. Once it goes a bit, you can hear that it's actually a, you know a, a cello, and there's a, a you know there's modulation within the notes, so that's fine. So I kind of heard two things at once there. Let's see. It sounded as if we were... play that again. The transition needs to come a bit earlier than that, I think. Okay. Um, so you change that to, I'm just pointing out if anybody's watching that, you change that to ending on cut, is that right? Rather than... 
no starting a car the like, thing is like if i start it right in the beginning i need to cut off the if i if i want to fade into it later i need to cut yeah. off the beginning a little bit okay um I like the I like the music I like the music transition very much, but I, the picture transition now looks as if it's coming a little bit too late. So should you just cut a little yeah. earlier? Yeah. Yeah. Still? Yeah. Okay. Lovely. And then stay on the older Willy for a while and let that, let us enjoy that beautiful face. there somewhere so we want to repeat this process again we want to go back to younger willie younger and high high cello and then back to older willie again so some yeah repeat of that Sorry, so these are so huge, I will need to render render them. We're going to add the, we're going to bring the other music back in again under the younger picture. Yeah. 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 49 seconds. Rendering our little kind of Zen moments and edits. <laughs> It was amazing seeing in March on Rome in London and not London, Rome in Bologna and Milan. Yeah, how was that? Quite young audiences, you know, and it was, you know, yesterday when we showed it in Milan, that's the, you know, Giorgio Meloni was 
confirmed as prime minister yesterday in Italy. You know, yeah. so it couldn't have been more timely to, to do it. You know, young audience is very totally, you could have heard a pin drop, you know, because it's such a serious subject, you know, and, and like some really full screenings. Right. I think we had the highest screen average for any film in Italy on Friday, actually. Whoa. Which I don't think has happened to our movies before. But I think it... Yes, please. But I think this is going to work, don't you? Yeah. I think it's telling, it's doing, it's establishing this, you know, dichotomy, these two people, these, this one person and two bits of her life. And then after that, so we've, and then we're going to go back to the old Willie, but this time the dialogue starts. So um, I think this time we won't be using the same woman in all four screens. Timo will start to have her looking at each other, her at herself. So I don't. So one, like, one old, one one young. Yeah, and so I mean, I think the way to do it is to you know, have young Willie and screen one and older Willie and screen three, do you think something like that? Or, and do we, you, you leave the other two screens black or? Oh, you can just do one and one. I mean, you can do one and three old and two and four or whatever, or like, or like the ones on one side. So would that be one and four? Mm -hmm. As long as, there's a as long as a feeling of them looking at each other. So one and four, Four could be older, yes, and two and three could be younger. So it's two looking at two like that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So let's do that. Now, the question is, let's just see who speaks. Can you remember who speaks first? I think it's older Willie who speaks. Oh, no, the younger Willie speaks first. So let's bring her up on two screens and have her say the first line. No, yeah, older speaks first, then. Yeah? Um, really? She says, what happened? What happened? <coughs> that's younger. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, I think it... What script are you looking at, Timo? It's the one that's on script. black? It's called... Sorry? The one that... Um, could you show me on screen what one you're looking at? Mm, right. Yes, you're quite, quite correct. I've got the wrong script up. Uh, yes, so, so yes, let's go to the older Willie first on, let's say that she's on screen one and four. One and four, so I leave three and f no, cut three and four. I can't find my own script. Uh, Timo, could you email me that script, please? Because I can't. Find yeah. Oh, no, hold on. I find it. Sorry, I find it. 
stupid me. Okay, this is where it's gonna get tricky. <clears throat> because what do we do here? <clears throat> do we keep biting? Well, anyway, we take it one step at a time. Did you send um, Linda and Anya the Zoom links, or will I do it? I can. I, well, I can do it just now. If you haven't done it, I'll do it while you're doing that. In case they want to join us at any moment. So, so we've got the two older willies. Um, now, the question is, I think we should have her just on one, the two older willies on one and four. Nothing originally, not, nothing just at this moment on two and three, Timo. Okay. So, so have her, have the older willie ask a question and then the younger willie can pop up and answer it. And then they can start ping-ponging like a tennis match you know or something but initially let's just have the older willie here and the when she starts speaking it will be like, kind of like a subtitle Yes, I think a sub, I mean, that's my thought, a subtitle. It'll look very nice on this black image, obviously, but we'll just have to test this and see. I like the idea of a subtitle because we know that words at the bottom of the screen represent somebody speaking. You know, that's the convention, isn't it? So we'll try it and see. Then here, yeah, it's interesting what to do with music in this sequence. Mm. Ooh, 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 I've just remembered something. Question is, will the audience see those words? I mean, like once it's once it's big, they will see it. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and quite uh, now, there's one thing we also need to try here as a reminder that Anya has sent us uh, some audio called "Breath One." And I, and I remember saying to her, it would be nice if we could almost hear, you know, Willie had bad lung condition, so she'd, uh, she, she had problems with her breathing. I uh, can't remember what it was, bronchitis or something throughout her life. So should we use the breath at this moment as well and fade the music down quite a bit? Okay. Because after all this, we're on the high cello at the moment and the high cello is the younger woman. So maybe they, maybe the music fades down for a bit like really low and
in, 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 in. Why am I not seeing this? The second subtitle? Yes. Well, when you answer that question, I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee. I'm back. <clears throat> the one subtitle isn't appearing. Oh, yeah, oh, I see that. Yeah. Obviously, you don't think need to think about captions, say for anything here, Timo, because yeah, it's yeah. not a broadcast event. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this will do for now. We would need to yes. fine tune it anyway, obviously. Yes, of course. So. so this is for timeline and storytelling and things like that, isn't it? But the actual final positioning not on screen. Okay, so let's yeah. just think of the sound here before we bring Jan Willy in. So. We've just said, as it were, that older Willie is the low violin piece by Linda and younger Willie is the upper, not violin, cello piece by Linda. So this is the high frequency cello playing. So either we bring that right down uh, or we try to transition to the older thing, but that might get a bit messy back and transitioning too much, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe try the breathing. I think that's a good mm -hmm. idea. Like, then yeah. they could just talk with the breathing if that yes. works. I think that's a good idea because um, we've we've introduced these two women who are the same woman, right? Um, and but the next stage is to get further and further inside their heads and sort of inside their to feel inside them, and the breathing I think will help with that. So let's try and lose the music in some elegant way and bring in the breathing. Yep. Oh, okay. This is my fourth cup of coffee today. Not very good. Anyhow, uh, 
I try and make like it would it would be good if we can only use like two um two tracks per screen basically. Otherwise it gets really complicated. So I try and make but I might need to you know Say that um, again too. Say that say that again. So like at the moment I've got two tracks for screen one, two for screen two. Right. Oh I see. You mean left and right? You mean yeah well like just yeah so but like you know if we want to mix music more you know like mm -hmm. have them start at the same time then i might need to um increase that which is fine it's just it's gonna make things more messy but um, yeah well if you know if 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 it makes just edit simpler by only using one track per screen then do but then when anya comes on board we can can you then restore tracks if necessary later on? Yeah. No, it's, it's fine. It's just I'm talking out loud more or less. Okay. It's fine. We just I try and put the breathing in, and then um, that's a nice exit of that piece of music. Whatever you did. Yeah. I would have a feeling that this bit is, I think we might lose the opening bit of the, of the paintings and things. And we shall see. Should only be on two screens, obviously, shouldn't it? Yes. Which which should the, the breathing. breathing? Yes, the breathing. This is where we have to start being very directional, you know. So the breathing will drag our eye over to the, the screen one and four, for example. So yes, it should only be in two. Yeah. Does that make it easier? No, it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> So you can hear that breathing. I can't really hear it there. Should you whack it up a bit so we can then obviously we can balance it properly when we get into the actual space? Yeah. Maybe keep the captions, Timo, until a little bit later when we hear that intake of breath. That's, I think, when the, the words should come up. In fact, you know the way you take in a breath before you speak? So I think the breath should come in and then we should hear what happened.
Nice. And then I, uh, very nice. I like the, and then I don't think we need the second big breath in there. We should just stay on the older picture and lose that second big breath. You want to keep the breathing, Alden? I think we should cut the breathing. So we'll cut out after, at that point once we've heard the big breath in and then out. And then when we cut to younger Willie, we give her breathing as well. So I think you're going to cut in and out of the breathing rather than keep it running. Okay. It's a bit empty without nothing there. Yes. I think I think it is, but this is again getting the ping ponging start, Timo. Then quite okay. soon we're going to be layering. We've got loads of Linda music. We've got loads of Anya sound coming in. In a moment, we're going to start to hear footsteps on ice, and then we're going to hear oh. the crackle yeah. thing. So I think don't worry about this moment of near silence. And then, and then young one. Willie on two and three. And I think we, for this first instance, when young Willie comes in, we cut out old Willie, you know, to make sure that we drag everybody's attention onto screen two and three. And breathing again. I think breathing again and again the in before she speaks. In fact, both, you could have both of those because, you know, she's saying, so the older Willie's saying, what happened? Where's the script again? Yeah, so the older Willie's saying, what happened? And the younger, you know what happened. You were there. So the, like, really, are we going to go through this again? Sort of, that's the feeling, you know. Yeah. I imagine the younger Willie's slightly, you know, Annoyed with the older Willie at this point for asking this question, you know. In 10 minutes, I have to do an audio check with uh, with um, Radio Scotland just to check that it's working for 3 p.m. today. Okay. Are they going to talk to you and me or, or are we just... Uh, uh, so, um, I, I, I don't know, to be honest. It's just going to be for 10 minutes and I think Janice will say, what are you doing? Right. You know, so you might need to say hello or something, but I don't know. We shall see. And should we don't need to like when we strip it into four films, can we work with that subtitle and maybe center it or something rather than have it justified left? Or do you want to do that now? Uh, yeah, maybe let's leave that for maybe later. Yeah, yeah, because it'll, it'll just slow this process down, won't it? It's a good question, actually. Should we do that now? Mm, mm. No. No. I think that's a no. Would that be better in black, that subtitle, or is that just something the game will decide later? I think once it will be full frame, I think it will be fine. Okay. But yeah, let's decide that later as well.
Can why do I have this problem here now? If it's easier for you just to put the subtitle on one screen for the time being, Timo, then we can do that and we can put it on the second screen when we... Okay. Does that help? I... Does, that, does that speed things up a bit? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can... It's fine. I saw it later. So it's okay. there. Okay. Good. So, so let's watch this bit. We, we, as I say, we need to introduce pauses between these questions and answers, you know. So let's... See how it's going so far. almost working you think yeah so i thought the transition from music to breathing works the first breathing really worked um i unfor un unfortunately timo i think that this second subtitle needs to be split in two i'm sorry about that but she needs to say you know what happened and then there needs to be a pause and then she needs to say you were there okay so you need to make two subtitles out of that rather than Yep. Do you think we need gentler breathing? That second set of breathing sounded very <gasps> as if she's climbing a hill rather than talking. Maybe, yeah. Why, why don't I go and just record some slightly gentler breathing that we can use for the time being? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, I'll just be a few minutes.
came back. I've just recorded some breathing audio. Okay, I'm going to email you this breathing stuff, which we can use for the time being. Okay. Okay, that's go that. to the toilet quickly. Okay, that's that gone. <clears throat> so if you're watching this and Timo editor has just gone to the toilet, you'll see that we this morning we've edited about one and a half minutes of our, our installation. The installation is going to run 14 minutes, 45 seconds. So it'll repeat every 15 minutes in fruit market. And during the course of it, what we want to do is int, you know, give the audience the feeling that they enter into an epiphany. They feel what an epiphany is like, what an, 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 an unusual, unexpected encounter in the world is like. Um, so we started so far, you saw with us putting into this uh, installation some of the conventional classical or romantic images of the Alps. And then we have introduced this woman, Wilhelmina Barnes Graham. And now we're going to start to try and see what she saw and how she saw it. Um, we're, I think, interested in neurochemistry and neurodiversity and what uh, this woman saw when she saw the Alps. She was neurodiverse, she was synesthetic. And when you look at her um, notebooks, there, she was ex um, extremely detailed in uh, listing what she was doing and why she was doing it and her experiments and her, her calculations, etc. So we want to get into that feeling, you know, and I am um, one of the reasons why I'm interested in her is that I myself have tendencies to that kind of, you know, mathematical geometric thing. So that's what um, we will be doing this afternoon and in the next few days. I now have to go into the BBC thing for a moment. Okay. Uh, which we're just going to do an audio check to see if the line is working acceptably for uh, call me. Uh, they call me live, so I have to put my headphones on, I do believe. Yeah, that's okay. And now I'm going to do this. Enter name. Hello. I'm hello.
And this is Mark in Edinburgh. Yes. Okay. If you say, if you hear me saying anything odd, I'm also on YouTube editing live, and so that's why I'm, I'm talking to my editor as well as you. Thanks. Hello. I can. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I really did. And if you're watching on YouTube, the reason I'm talking rubbish is that I'm also doing a line check <laughs> to the BBC. So I'm talking to somebody else at the same time. So I think Timo caught a gentle voice for this. I've obviously got headphones on, so I'm hearing things clearer than previously. You mean the breathing? Yes. Yeah. I gave you some very gentle breaths there, you know, so it's... Yes, that one, Timo, is good. I like that. Look at the letters. Yes, Timo. That's nice. And I think wait a little bit longer before you come into that first subtitle, which is really, well, here we go. We're going back to talk about this again. Are we sort of things so a little longer? Okay. Yeah, 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 that, that keep, leave it that still longer. Yeah, yeah. Yes, hello, BBC. That's okay. Oh dear. I haven't actually switched my good mic in, but some people say that just this is sounds good enough without the good mic. I will try the good mic and let me just uh ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to unplug something. Oops, keeping, the, uh, keeping my headphones off. <clears throat> Put my headphones on again, plugging in the good mic, and that's it. Now, does, does that sound any better? Oh, dear. really? Is that because I've got my mic? Um... Oh, you sound very different there all of a sudden. Yeah. I don't know how to deal with that. If you were happy with it beforehand, then could we go with that? Because I'm also, uh, yeah, I'll, if, it's, if, if it sounded good to you, then I will go with that. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's nobody else. Okay, so that's me with the, the mic, yes. Hello. Yes. Hello.
for people watching on YouTube, the reason I'm talking gobbledygook is I'm also speaking to the BBC here at the moment. That's why, if they can hear me. So Timo, did that work to leave quite a long breath on the young Willie? I think so, yeah. You know what happened then? You could drop the subtitle and just look at, at young Willie before the second one comes in. So just, okay, yeah. So, so just no subtitle. For a moment we just see her and then the other one yeah. comes in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know what happened. Excuse me, Tim, I've got a phone call. Yep. Hello, it's Mark. Hi there. No, I didn't intend to, sorry. I've just through the call me thing, you think? Uh, yeah, oh, I, 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 I've said call me. And then, okay, so I'm now in again. Right, okay, I don't know why that is. <clears throat> I don't know why that is. You can hear me on the phone, but not, oh, yeah. Right. No, no, I didn't close, so I need to close it again, do I? Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll try that now. I'll, I'll keep you on, on, the, on the phone when I do that. Okay, here we go. I'm going in again. Call me, yeah. So it says that I'm, yeah. Okay. Okay. I I unplugged my um, microphone from a USB, but apart from that, I didn't click on anything. I'm also hearing a a, a, a delay on my voice, but it's oh, it's gone now. Phone. Okay, that's okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, when I'm talking to Janice at three o'clock, I will also be live on YouTube. So there will be some background things happening, but that's, yeah. But I think you, you guys know that. Okay. Okay. Hi, Fiona. Sure, of course. Sure, of course, but I won't click out of my live edit. I'll just keep it going, but you won't hear very much because I'll have headphones on, so you won't hear any ambient, I don't think. <laughs> it's quite unusual, isn't it? Because I'm live now, so the people on YouTube are thinking, who is he speaking to? <laughs> cool. Okay, thanks. So it's, I'll, I'll, I'll click back in at five past three. Okay. Bye, bye, bye. Sorry about that, Timo, and anybody who's watching. I'm back now.
uh, just doing one thing rather than two. So yeah, I um, I guess we go back to her. So I just started. I have to, sorry, Timo. I have to disconnect here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Timo. Hi. No. Um, so I guess we're just going back to her. So I just. Yeah. So the question is when do the question is when do we start having them look at each other rather than bounce from one to the other, you know? So let's... I mean, it's still kind of... There's still a bit of apprehension at the moment, isn't there? So yes, I think so, yeah. But let's, let's, let's just watch the conversation so far and see how it's going. So we need another breath, I think, between those two subtitles. Okay, same one or? I know a slightly later one too. So she's done the big intake of breath and then there's slightly gentler ones afterwards, Timo. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's so long ago, and then yeah. And so what I don't what do you think? Should we just keep bouncing between the two of them and not have all not have both up yet? Or I mean there's quite a lot of the conversation to go yet, so maybe we keep them separate. I mean, I think in the beginning, just like I think once they start the conversation, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like it's still there's still um Yeah. Could we just look through the script for a moment, Timo, and decide because what we want them is to talk for a bit and then stop and introduce other visual elements and then go back. So she's saying, what happened? You know, you know what happened, you were there. It's so long ago. And then the old Willie says, isn't it? 
And then there's a pause. And then she says to the younger Willie, are you not answering? And then the younger Willie says, I'm thinking. Yeah. And then of what? Of that day a month ago, five years ago? She, 50 years ago. Um, so maybe we do all of that in this first question down to 50 years ago, do you think, in this first section? Yeah. Because uh, I think that's a really, it's a real dialogue between the two of them there, isn't it? So we can't break it up too much. I think, I think what I could see you working is you just cut hard between that and then maybe 50 years ago and then maybe we fade her up, the younger one, for 50 years for you. I didn't expect it, but then both of them up. From that point on? Yeah. Okay, so keep it ping-ponging until that point. But then we okay. also want to pause the story because see when she says 50 years ago, that's almost like flashback moment. That's when we can start introducing, you know, some of the footage that I shot on the glacier or something like that. And that's where we start to hear the footsteps on snow, you know, we're going back in time. So maybe so we can we do that then. But yeah, but you could then just go back to this. So go back to the old one. Yeah. For more, once that sequence is done, you go back to the old one for a little bit and then yeah. you fade the younger one in and then they're talking to each other that way. So keep them separate until 50 years ago and then have them both on screen. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Or like if you want like a sequence before that where you say like, oh, we see some glacier stuff, that's fine. But then, yeah, then we bring where would like, Where would we break it then, do you think? Are you not answering? Uh, I think 50 years ago is fine. And then you can have whatever you, you want to show stuff. from 50 yes, years ago. I think so. I think visual stuff. And then we come back to them after 50 years. And this time they're both up on screen. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could still, like, whoever. You could also, you could just bring old one back and fade the younger one in at that point. As you notice, I'm saying older rather than old. Okay. And <laughs> um, so say that again, you could bring the older one back and then. Then maybe fade the younger one in. But we can see. It's not a biggie. Let's just, it, let's it, just it, do the ping pong and then do, let's do the sequence. And then yeah, we but can the, see. the reason I'm asking is how, how much ping pong do we do before we break? Uh, I think we, we should ping pong until 50 years. It, ex probably, probably that's the best idea, but is there an argument for going, isn't it? And then some visual stuff, and then her saying, are you not answering? See, there's a natural sort of gap in between those two word sentences, do you not think? Isn't it? Uh, you know, but... Uh, I but think like if, we, uh, if after isn't it, lots of images come or whatever, not, you not, kind of... Not lots, but something like two images or something. Okay. Um. And in particular, what I'm thinking, you know, in the stock footage folder, we've got um, shots of film crackle and all that sort of stuff. It's this is the point where we have to start you know, uh, getting into the inside of her brain a bit. So, isn't it? There should definitely be a pause. Now, maybe it should just be the pause of the younger Willie not answering the older Willie for, for a bit. See, like, do you, are you, um, do you want to keep definitely all these words? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, definitely. That's right. This is really pared down. I wrote a longer script and I pared it down quite a lot too. Yeah. It's just like you say, like, you know, that you could, this kind of, you, you do to you do answer some of the stuff visually if you just like isn't it and then you see images you know yeah yeah then 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 you obviously know what they're what's going on in their head at that point the same way are you not answering if you would show images you'd be like well i'm thinking like i'm thinking back about that yeah 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 i don't think um, that, yeah which then i mean like you kind of answer that so if if she then asks of what I think that's the yeah, earliest what... point that, like you should see other images. So it should it should be definitely ping pong until of what otherwise 
we already know what they're thinking of. So like her asking of what. Mm, but, but, mm, but I'm not necessarily suggesting, depends what we see. You know, if we saw like the film crackle, that's not the Alps. For example, okay, yeah. you know, it's okay. just it's just more like her, we're actually seeing her thinking. Yeah. Well, let's compromise here then and say around about either after isn't it or after I'm thinking, add film crackle in. Uh, but um, no Alps picture. Yeah, OK. And there's a very just just before you do that, Linda has a piece of a piece called brain just neurons which i love and this is the moment i think to bring in brain plus neurons brain neurons drone uh, oh no brain just neurons yeah brain, brain just neurons it's really good i think it'll go really well with the film crackle imagery but it does sound of, sort of sound like a brain firing up and memories beginning sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, so so we're ping-ponging a bit more then, are we? Yes. Yeah, so what have you got? What's the last thing? It, it's so long ago? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then... So the older Willie should also say, isn't it? She should wait for a moment and then say, isn't it? And then she doesn't get an answer from the younger Willie. I'm so hungry. <laughs> it is almost 12. I mean, what time did we say we'd stop at 12 30? Yeah. Okay. I can um, so, so let's go to younger Willie on two screens not answering. And okay. then, uh, yeah. And then the film crackle and, uh, and Linda's neurons. I think the silence is working here for me. <laughs> the silence is working there for sure. Yeah. Yes, and then I, I, you know, we won't we won't have loads of just empty bits, but I think we might need some filler because, like, like in between here. Yeah. The breathing and stuff, just some room, room. Yes. Yes. I think so. so it doesn't just go. Totally yeah. 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 
but I do have a sense of them being in dialogue, don't you? Yep. You know, it's nice to go back to the older Willie again. And, and But we're not doing our, are you not answering, Timo, yet? We're doing the... Okay. Yeah, so I think that it's nice to go back to the older Willie again without a, any caption on it, and then go to the film Crackle and the, and the um, Linda Neuron music. Or maybe, do we, do we go back to the old Willie again, or do we... Don't know. Um, okay, I see what my, you're doing. my hunch is that we should stay on the younger Willie because the older Willie's asking the younger Willie, come on, answer here. But the younger Willie's going inside her head for a bit. Yeah, but it, just by cutting to them without saying anything, it. it, it enhances yeah. the feeling of dialogue yes. I feel yes though. but then I think because the film crackle is the younger Willie thinking then let's go back to the younger Willie again before we go to it yep so and that will just be on her screen yes no I, I think it should I know I, it's an interesting point whether it should just be on her screen but I think it should be on all four screens okay because it should really this is the first bit of moment the bit of movement since the cows isn't it so i think people should be wow it's everywhere you know we're now inside a brain And then the crackles that we used for the trailer. I uh, know it's the stuff I sent you, Timo. You know, it's a footage called stock footage. Yeah. I bought it just recently. Yeah. And which one of those? Uh, well, I prefer, personally like the one. We'll use them all, hopefully. But I like the one that begins 1901. Yeah. And this is where I wondered, of course, should we slow it down a little bit or like quite a lot, like 30% or something? Yeah. Because it, it might go nicer with Linda's music if it's a bit slower. Answering, so that's the older Willie. So, like, is it too weird to have this over this or even over black? Should we see her again, or what do you think? What What do you mean? Say that again. Oh, are you not answering? Should, yes. Is that is that should we just show older Willie Willie again, or is could is there room to do something else with like, have it even over black? Oh. Sorry, I need to take this. This is about my dog. Sorry. Okay, go for it. You need to go Hello, to this. Hi there. So, if you're watching live, uh, the idea here is you know, that we want to talk about brain activity in the times of intense visual, sonic, or emotional experience. And I mean, there's a lot more work 
done on this. There's a really good book actually uh, called <clears throat> Neuro Art History, and it's written by John Onions, anyway, Neuro Art History. And it's looking again at the kind of trying to talk about the brain activity of particularly visual people or people who, who think visually in an unusual way. So what we're doing here is trying to talk a, a little bit about brain activity, but in a metaphorical way. So we're not actually trying to show neurons firing. We're using old film crackle footage here. We're going to slow it down. And as I love cinema, and I think that cinema is a sort of like dreamlike thing, it seems to me that if we use these kind of crackle or scratches or whatever you want to call it, dirt and dust on the image and slow it down, it'll be a sort of metaphor for um, visual thinking or brain activity, uh, a sort of elegant, and um, unexpected way to talk about that feeling you have when you think, oh my goodness, something's happening to me that, um, <clears throat> you, you know, when you, do you ever feel that your brain is being rewired in the moment? Uh, you know, this can happen if you have really bad experience, of course, like a traumatic experience, there's a lot of evidence that suddenly, you know, things happen. Uh, in your brain, uh, but also if you have a sublime experience or you have an encounter, which you could trans, when you, which you could say simply, you could say is, oh my God, of course. And that of course aspect of uh, uh, an artistic or aesthetic experience, that feeling of, I knew this would happen or I was waiting for this to happen or it was inevitable. I think that something that happened to Wilhelmina Barnes Graham when she climbed the glacier in May 1949 was, at last, I've found something that is... Right, Mo, do, you want to, do you want to stop? No, it's fine. Sure, Timo, we can stop now if you want, if, you, if you've got bad news about your dog or you need to go or something. No, it's, it's not good news, but it's, it's still more, it's, it doesn't matter. Let's go till half 12. And half then 12, we'll okay. Do so we'll do another 25 minutes and then we'll break. Okay, yeah. so what we, we were deciding where to put this film crackle, and I was just explaining to anybody listening that we're using this film scratching material metaphorically to you know, suggest a kind of neural activity. Um, so we were talking about where to put it. So I think that after isn't it is a possibility. And you are, what were you suggesting, Timo, that we go back to older Willie? All uh, right, so you don't... Ooh. Sorry. I've... Oh, no, yeah. So like, yeah. No, isn't we it? have isn't it, you and then it. and then we have young so, Willie just listening, yeah. And, and then, then I think, like, we, so I think we maybe don't go back to older Willie unless we. If you want to bounce twice like that, do. But I don't think anything more should be said until after the film crackle. Yeah, that's fine. And it's then, just, that, then, then it's the question: the Are you not answering? Should just just be over the older Willie picture again, or do you yes. want that off something else? No, it should be the over because we have to make it clear that it's Willie She's asking talking. this question. You know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and I think that means that you can, if you want, bring the Linda mu brain mu music in over the stills, if you want, or do you want to leave them totally silent and? Oh, you've got the money. So it's coming in over over younger Willie okay. now. Okay, good. Well, that makes sense. So here. Oh, that's nice. And that's nice. That's that's not slowed down, is it? That's real real speed, is it? Or is it slowed down? No, it is slowed down. Okay, good. Because that that timing seemed about right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, and then I just. I'll just put Willie here again. Yes, and I think keep this mu keep this music going because it's very appropriate, I think. <clears throat> mm. 
<laughs> oh, I really like that combination of film scratch and Blender music. <laughs> you know that you no know, you know what's interesting here, Timo? Yeah. If we keep screen one and four for older Willie and two and three for younger Willie, then the audience will understand that so much that at times you could just put up the subtitle and not have the photograph, you know? That's what I meant, yeah, yeah. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's not do it here, but we can do it a bit later yeah. in the script, I think, yeah. Oh, that, that audio is great, I love it. Ooh. <laughs> that was a bit, uh, yeah. Um. Okay, that's that's almost working. Yeah. But the um, subtitle shouldn't come up at the same time as the older Willie picture. I think we should just see her for a moment, and then the subtitle <clears throat> should come in. So I think we could, um, so are you, obviously the, the film grain, film scratch will be on four screens. Are you going to do that now or? The film scratch. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, I should do that. You're right. <coughs> I think that'd be very nice in an almost dark room just to see these flickering, scratchy things. Yep. Um... I think we shouldn't use that boingy bit of music. The I think the boingy bit might be just again <laughs> rendering. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I was wondering it didn't sound very Linda to have a kind of boing. Okay, I think it's, I mean, it's very interesting, but it's not quite right for here. So maybe you need to do a little invisible dissolve or something.
Okay. Okay. So are you going to put that in the four quadrants now, or are you going to do it in another the, the, the film crackle? Uh, I did for the first time. Um, are we using much more of it, yeah? Of what? Of the crackle. Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, we'll probably go to another piece, but you know what I mean? It should I, be all four. I just do it when we, when we come to it. It's not a lot of work. What did you mean when we come to it? So you mean, you mean the visually, the film crackle? I mean that, you know, it should be in the four quadrants and it's just on one screen at the moment, yeah. And so um, are you... Of course, yeah, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> mm -mm 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 -mm. Sorry, I don't know quite what's going on here now. Uh... Obviously, you know, we can see that this is working, Timo. So if this is the sort of thing you'd prefer to leave until the next stage, you know, then you know, it would be Makes nice. It would be, be nice to see uh, the recordings. Yeah, this one's like, should I be? It's fine. The number three, one, two, three, it's all there. Number two. Number four. I don't know what happened to number four.
So we got the no uh, look, that's nice. No, look at that, that's lovely. Okay. Great. And uh, then, so then there's a pause before that title comes, before her next line comes up. Are you not answering it? You know? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a little yeah. pause. Do you want a longer uh, one? A little longer, if you don't mind. You know, she's impatient to get this conversation going. Uh, but the older woman's still in reflective, uh, the younger woman's still in reflective mode, I think. Yeah. Okay, now. She, then the younger woman says, I'm thinking. So we keep the audio keeping going because they, uh, this audio is working very well, isn't it? And I think we... Yep. We go to the younger woman on her on screen two and three as always. And then I don't know if we yeah, I don't I think we don't see any crackle during this. Unless you put the crackle. Would it work to have younger women in two and three and crackle in one and four? Or or, or would you should we keep Willie? Is this the first time they should both look at each other? Like all four quadrants, do you think? Or is that too early? I think maybe a bit too early. Okay, we'll wait until after this because there are quite a few sequences coming up. So we'll, we'll sort of delay that moment for a little bit longer. <laughs> That's one of the slightly comedy bits. So, again, I think a little edit. Or maybe we, maybe if it continues like that, Timo, there's another Linda piece called Neurons, isn't it? Should, we, should, should you have a listen to it? Oh, there's one called Force Field. Oh, there's one called Force Field, which is quite nice as well. Do you want to use a different one? Maybe, I think so. I think we've given this sort of crackly impression, isn't it? But but also we want to get a sense of getting a little bit deeper into the cognition process, you know? So maybe a change. Have a look at, have a listen to Force Field. Number seven. Maybe it's too heavy yet. It's too heavy yet, isn't it? I think maybe. Yeah. yeah. What about number six? The second number six. We were listening to just neurons there, were we? Previously? Yes. So try. 
No, I think they just maybe let's stick. Oh, what's brain cello number six? Brain cello. <laughs> It might be also too heavy. Okay, well, let's just either stick with. I mean, I can just if you, if you like that kind of sound, you know, I can just find those bits and no, you know, the, no, no. I mean, like from the brain, just neurons. What oh, do okay, you Yes, and just loop certain bits of it. Yeah, I think. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That's fine. What instrument that is? I I think it's just like like just literally just like sounds and then you just um oh, stretch the them and, and stuff. Them. Oh, yes, oh yes, it could be that yeah, electronic key. Yeah, because I remember talking to her and we discussed the fact that she would use like <clears throat> real classical instruments like cellos, but also some ele electronic sounds. You know, in that combination. God, totally blew my mind. I saw something yesterday. You know, like, you know that there was a Twin Peaks box set. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe that's where it comes from, but I did not know that. So, like, old VHS Twin Peaks box set, and someone had rearranged it to spell FX Twin. No. And I was like, my God. Because no. that's a bit. Of wow. So, so you can spell FX Twin, I guess, with Twin Peaks? FX Twin? But, yeah. But I mean, X? I know, but like, like, it wasn't like the... I try and find it. <laughs> but like, like, it, it didn't 100% and, you know, okay. <laughs> match, but like, you could, you could, it was definitely readable, you know. If it was a hundred percent, that would have been too freaky. Because so David Lynch, I'm sure, would it be would be a fan of FX Twin. But uh... yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I'm not surprised you're thinking of, of FX Twin here. <clears throat> Hmm. Let's come back from Italy with a cold. <clears throat> and then, and then there's a link. Sorry. Uh, and then there's one more line, you know, of what? And then we really begin to open out at this bit after she says, of what? The older of Willie says, of what? And for the thinking, you want to see crackles again, or? Um, no, I th and no, I don't. So I think the audio keeping going is enough. So we don't have any more crackle. Uh, we don't use any more of that crackle that's currently on screen. Okay. Just, just the same the same again. Older same again to, for older Willie and the screen one and four with of what and then that's a jumping. It's like the end of the first act, as it were. You know, that's a jumping off point to go into glassier shots, etc.
Am I still alright? No, I'm not. Am I? It's just hard to keep track of where everything. Yeah. What lay everything should be. I checked there over lunch. But, um. That needs to come down here. And then. It's 12.30. Are we going to be cut off Zoom? No, I think I need to... You do need to... I think it goes on for as long as we want to. But... Okay, well, well, if anybody's watching, we'll be we'll finish. In about, this is the last thing we're going to do before lunch, so we'll probably finish in two or three minutes and then take a break for lunch. Well, I think that timing picture-wise is right. Obviously, you're going to change that bit of music a little bit there to make something like more low-key, but that's a good ending there, Timo. Do you agree? Okay, yeah. Great. So let's stop there and have a bite to eat. Anybody who's watching, thank you for watching our, what would you call a badger cam <laughs> or keeping up with the Kardashians and for the next episode. <laughs> Uh, for you. Timo and I will be back here in one hour's time. I'm going to eat, I was going to say a pizza, but I'm tempted to eat two pizzas. I'm so hungry. But <laughs> So Timo, thank you for this morning. And anybody who's watching, thank you for watching. And we'll come back at 1.30. You